Hello guys and welcome back to King Aegon Targaryen's War of Conquest. Now, uh, I'm I'm putting I'm gonna start this, but I'm putting my money on Aegon dying this episode. He's 62. He's on a tour. He has to die at some point. <laughs> I've kind of been openly waiting for him to die so that we can have the chaos that's gonna be Arian the Unworthy. He is a special kind of terrible. You and your modest retainer of bodyguards are finally nearing Sunspear. I forgot I actually visited Sunspear before we ended. Uh, you start by addressing the small folk, flanked by a small bodyguard. Your haughty words are not received well, and the justice you dispense is looked upon as arbitrary. The small folk have been unsettled by your arrival. So this is what happened with the, uh, Stormlands. It's the exact same thing. Where, for what I, whatever reason, we're, our justice is arbitrary to them. Sunspear. The conditions are stormy as Sunspear finally comes into view along the road. An honored guard of knights and lords awaits you before the gates, along with Sinesco, who personally greets you. The castle has high stone walls with moss climbing up them, and huge square towers flanking the gate and walls, giving a commanding view of the surrounding peninsula. Inside the walls, you encounter a sweltering outer ward, a keep, and a sept. So this is slightly different from the other ones. You arrive at the castle and are given a befitting welcome by Lady Paramount Diria Martell and a large party of knights and lords. Lady Paramount Diria enthusiastically shakes your hand, asks after your wife, and offers you mead, after which she invites you to a large feast in your honor. So, this last bit was, I think, the same as the Reach, whereas the Stormlands, I think, were different. But the beginning was different from both of them. So it is mildly unique text. Looks like. How marvelous. Torn of Sanford is used as attendance of the feast in Sunspear to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Leonette of the Sandship made an attempt on his life and demands that she's brought to justice for attempted murder. Now, who's Leonette of the Sandship? Do I know her? You expect she'd be a rival, no? Huh. Who is she? Oh. Stupid of me. She's dishonorable. She's the spy master of Dorne. She is dishonorable. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do it, because apparently it's fairly obvious this even loses just, so this seems like the just option. We've arrested the Spymaster of Dorne on charges of murder, or attempted murder, more like. I mean, she'll probably still stand a trial, I assume, when we come back. We have a couple of people to take us to trial. The Treasurer of Sunspear has presented to the court a list of damages caused by a weir built by the people of the Shadow Town on the river to your Demesnes, which has caused a great loss of coin to the Treasury. Oh. <sighs> Really? An extra tax? We'll just bear the losses, but again we lose money? <laughs> Jesus. I'm not taking another loan. Those banks, they're, they're, hmm. I got like a 300 gold loan and Bravos ended up taking like 700 gold from me because they kept charging me interest. After many days of feasting, of talking, it is time for you to leave your, fe your host and move on to your next destination on your royal progress. We travel onwards, which we can only do in like two months. Madness and greatness are two sides of the same coin, and every time a new Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin in the air, and the world holds its breath to see how it lands. Again, we get diligent for the great. We keep getting the worst possible great trait. Did he get diligent, too? Yeah, Valerian also got diligent, so both of their kids turned out well. Valerian actually looks really good. For whatever reason, his father's having him trained by a septon. Which, I mean, isn't great. Was he a lunatic beforehand? I think he was. I know he was club-footed, yet very attractive. Your grace, your entourage is awaiting. Yeah, I know that. I need more money. She wants a dark cell in the dungeon. No, you can rot. You're being charged for attempted murder. You don't get high quarters. You're not exactly high-born either. You know, so you can just rot for a while. During your journey across the seas, your ship was hit by a terrible storm. The ship is violently rocking back and forth, and you try to cling on to anything to keep steady whilst your men tend to keep the ship on course, and more importantly, in one piece. Oh, the seven, no. We've seen this chance, so it's 50% of fine, 40% of being wounded, and 10% of death. Last time we got wounded. And we get wounded again. <laughs> Damn it. As the men slowly manage to get the ship back under your control, you hear a loud crack from above and a piece of the mast comes hurtling towards you, hitting your arm. As you slowly recover and stand up, you see that it has impaled itself in your arm. The surgeon on board comes to help you as the crew have got the ship under control and proceed to your destination. This better not get infected. So I'm wounded again. Oh god. Visenya died at 64, and it seems 
My nephew, the Hand of the King, Daemon Baratheon, has been appointed the new regent. Which makes sense. I mean, he is the Hand. Do I give her a funeral? See, now I really want to come back for the funeral. Damn it! That, there was for certain the option to come back, and I forgot I wanted to do that. <laughs> can I come back for the funeral, please, Aegon? You can stop your tour. Oh, okay. I don't have money for... Jesus, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to, guys. I'm sorry. Who doesn't... They all give me massive interest. <laughs> oh, Iron Bank. You win. My vassals in the court shall honor. Yeah. Not all the lords and ladies. But my vassals... In fact, yeah. All lords and ladies. Whatever. This is a direct command from Aegon to the to Daemon Baratheon. We are... We are having a big funeral, and she has left me Dark Sister now in death, which I plan to give probably to one of my sons. I mean, Arian isn't really worthy of it, is he? But, I mean, what, what else Who else am I going to give it to? He's got eight now. Two silver links. Is the pewter new? Peoples and cultures. Did he always have the pewter? Probably. You graced your entourage. Yes, I know my entourage is waiting. God. I've gone to him. So next to Castamir, I guess. We'll end this, and then we can come back quickly for the funeral. The invitations have been sent to the lords and ladies of the realm to come to the funeral. It's time to prepare the feast and the funeral itself. The guests will arrive soon. Best get on with it. Okay, okay, we'll just imagine that Aegon's attending the funeral first and then flying over to Castamir. <laughs> okay. Still really douchey, but whatever. Time passes, yet to me the world seems unreal. It is as if a life without Visenya is but a mummer's farce. I'm lost in the sea of loneliness and know not where to turn. I can try and move on with my life. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's because he's... Okay, I thought... Yeah, I was laughing because I thought Vakar was the only one who cared that Visenya was dead and that Arian did not care that his mother had died, but I just realized he's Rhaenys' son. So it make... He's the only kid of Visenya, so it makes sense. That's fine, then. Lose yourself in books, songs, and the wisdom of others. Drown yourself in wine, women, and song. I don't know about this one, because we're still married to Rainies. Or if we're not married, we're concubines, whatever. I make her primary or something. So I'm not going to drown myself in other women. I'm still in love with Rainies, you know? I guess this. I've become depressed again. Not surprised. There it is. Best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar, and duck, spices, wine, and ale, honey for the desserts, cheeses, and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. Spend lavishly. Oh god, I'm never gonna pay that loan back. <laughs> I'm never gonna do it. Uh, let us stretch a ro I don't. <laughs> We're gonna have to take a pause on the road, Damon. Please stop finishing roads. <laughs> Damn it. No, I don't wanna do either of these. It's a hundred more gold I'm wasting. Can I continue with this? No, god damn it. It's really stupid that I can't just pause the road works till I have more money. That's one of my uh, my little pet peeves. I'm gonna spawn high garden, fine. Let the feasting commence. See, I'm at negative balance and I've already taken a loan. I don't, I don't have money for that, I'm sorry. I can't, in high, plus, I wouldn't hire mummers and whatever for my wife's death, you know. You and your modest retainer of bodyguards are finally near, and Castamere, you start by addressing the small folk flying by a small bodyguard. Oh, it's the same. Haughty. And he doesn't like it, he's, he's pissed. Lord Clarence Toyne has used his attendance in the Feast and King's Landing to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims the Lord Roland Craycall sullied his honor by having illicit relations with his wife. Huh. Now, normally I'd just make him pay just recompense. But, I mean, here's, here's what I'm going to do. He is, because Aegon is, he's in mourning. He's widowed, he's depressed, he's really, he's going to lash out at this guy who's sullied a marriage, you know? His wife just died, and it's like, how dare you come between a man and wife, you know? He's going to get real mad. Arrest him. As the feast begins, Lord Boris Blount presents a petition before the court. He says the crime and bandage. Oh my god, you deal with it. You deal with it, Blount. I don't have money. I can't. I'm sorry. 
Castamir, after many days traveling through sweltering mountains, you and your entourage have made it to Castamir. The knights guarding the gates hail your coming and allow you entry. Walking amongst the sweltering mountain of Castamir, you see the land is dotted with mines, from which pour gold in astonishing quantities. There are gold mines at many locations in the hinterland, which pour into the castle itself. Here you observe a prospering market and populace, fed by the wealth of the mines. So this is a new one, and it's probably dependent on him having the gold mines in his castle. A guard of honor welcomes you as you enter the castle. Knights and lords in their finest attire stand in line to salute you. And countless Targaryen banners adorn the castle, with the words fire and blood also emblazoned on large banners. Lord Paramount Lewin Martell heartily welcomes you, and you warmly discuss altruism and the value of everyday kindness as you enter. Fascinating. So that was a very warm welcome. Uh, yeah, he also wants crime and banditry. You deal with it. I, I don't have money to deal with things. I don't. <laughs> Whilst I was walking down one of the streets of Castamir, I took a wrong turn and stumbled into a local brothel. The numerous Westermen beauties of the res that reside here do look quite enticing. Again, I'm not... With the death of Asenia, I'm not going to turn to women and wine and whatnot because I still have another lover. So I'll not lower myself to that level. You committed much gold to this extravagant feast. In particular, the guests were impressed with a large centerpiece on the dais table. It represented a green lawn surrounded with large peacock's feathers and green branches, in which were tied violets and other sweet-smelling flowers. In the middle of this, a fortress was placed, covered with silver. The fortress was hollow and formed a sort of cage, in which several live birds were shut up, their tufts and feet being gilt. On its tower, which was gilt, the banners of Oz Targaryen were placed. It was worth a coin. Yes, truly. Damaray spoke up and told everyone how great the food at my feast was. I was really glad someone was kind enough to say something nice about the food, given how hard I had worked to ensure that food was the best part of the feast. That was well spoken. Thank you, Damaray. <sighs> Oh, okay, this isn't crime and banditry, good. Elaine has used her attendance at the feast in Castamere to present a petition before justice, be for justice before the court. She claims the Lord Jason Prester made an attempt on her life and demands that he's brought to justice before attempted murder. Is this true? It doesn't seem to be true, but it's apparently unjust to say no, so it is. Okay. Ethan Valerian has used his attendance at the feast in King's Landing to present a petition for justice before the court. Oh, God. <laughs> he claims that while he was detained by Lord Arian Targaryen, he was barbarically tortured and mutilated. He demands justice and redress for his abuse of this person. Arian! <laughs> what were you doing? You burned him. You don't even have a dragon, but he's, he's clearly a little obsessed with fire. <laughs> oh, Arian. You're, a you're gonna be a fun guy to play as. I can tell. Uh... <laughs> I'll order my son to pay recompense. I won't arrest him, obviously, he's my son. But I can't be unjust and say no, he didn't do anything. He will pay recompense. A petitioner by the name of... The, of uh, Sir... Uh, okay, that's a typo. Of Sir Franklin Farman requests remedy, stating that he has been dip dispossessed of his lands by armed thugs and that part of his demesnes have been sold. He claims that men came in and force and plowed his land, claiming it to be part of the liberty. He claims now to have nothing, where he was once accustomed to serve the king with loyalty. No, I'm not going to give you gold. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have gold. I... No, that's still gold. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Leave. <laughs> oh, this is the worst court that uh, Aegon's ever held in a feast. He's just throwing everyone away and saying no. Lord Damien Tarbeck has used the attendance of the feast in King's Landing to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Sir Lionel Legood sullied his honor by having illicit relations with his wife behind his back and demands recompense for this slight. Again, I'm gonna be mad. I mean, this is the funeral after all. Arrest him. Uh, Lord Jason Prester's complaining. When I come back, you will all hold trials. My coffers are empty, but the septs are rich. Maybe I should seize sept properties to repay my debts. Ooh. Yes, I think I will. I'm authoritative. I'm diligent. I mean, I'm not particularly zealous or anything. I'm a little humble, I guess. I'm not going to force them because I'm not wroth or, like, arbitrary or anything. But I will compromise with them. I will compromise to find some money. That gives me some money I'm no longer under. After many days of feasting, of talking, it is time for you to leave your host and move on to your next destination on your royal progress. I will cut this short, thankfully. <laughs> oh, the funeral. As the Silent Sisters finish the preparation of the deceased, the body of Asenia is brought to the local sept and laid atop the altar at its center. Canopic jars of ornate design are placed at the feet of the dead. 
The eldest child places the death stones upon the closed eyes of the deceased. So Vakar's come back from the citadel for his mother's funeral. He's gotten married. I thought you you were gonna be a maester. He got married to a lowborn girl called Galissa, apparently. Okay. Weird, but okay. Uh, one by one, those closest to the departed in life make their way into the sept and speak their goodbyes, shed their mournful tears, and pray to the seven for the dead. As the day winds down and the last goodbye is said, the body is carried by kin along the crowd-lined streets to its final resting place. As the sun fades away, a great feast is held, and those who knew the dead recount stories of the life and deeds of the lost. And so it is done, Visenya Targaryen died a natural death on the third of the fifth moon of 8035, at age 64. 64. At age 64. She was a woman who didn't let anyone stand in her way. Viseni was one of the greatest warriors of her generations, her martial prowess being famed throughout the kingdom. Viseni wielded the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister, one of the ancestral blades of House Targaryen. And so it is done. There you go. First her dragon died. Her dragon was the first dragon to die, and now she's died. My dragon was the second to die. Does that, does that mean Aegon's gonna kick it next? I mean, Rhaenys is one still alive. If Rhaenys dies first, we're taming Meraxes, though. For our late <laughs> life. My prisoner Lionel Legget is complaining about his dark cell. Oh yeah, I, I gotta do that now. Now that I'm back from my tour, I think. No, I'm still out. I'll be back in a couple of days, though. She's improved relations with the Faith of the Seven uprising. <laughs> no, Rhaenys. No, that's not necessary that you improve relations with those people. Fact. Stop it. Council voted against commanding him to end the war. The only one who voted for ending the war, I don't know if you guys saw that, was Sept was the Septon. The Septon's the only one who Huh. Maybe my little dragon prediction actually had some truth to it. <laughs> Maybe the whole idea that the Targaryens are dying with their dragons. Not not too false. Uh the Maester's been appointed regent for whatever reason. As per law and custom, my wealth has been divided between my kinsmen and I. Okay. In a second. King Aegon has taken la his last breath at age 62. He died of severe stress. Prestigious man, Aegon's deeds and exploits were spoken of throughout the known world. May he now rest in peace with the gods. King Arian, a true sadist, we fear for what the realm will turn into under his rule. Long live King Arian. <laughs> Truly. What a king he'll be. So be it. I immediately remove a Septon from the council. Your grace, his grace King Aegon has taken his last breath. May he repose in peace. Now his heir, Prince Arian Targaryen, will take the throne and will rule the Seven Kingdoms henceforth. Long live the king. Now, just let's have a look here. Oh, it's about what I expected. It really... <laughs> I will legitimately be shocked if we're not deposed eventually. I mean, they all hate me. None of them like me. So what Arian's going to do is he's going to come out of hiding... To claim his crown. And now he's going to hold a funeral for his father. Because despite his terrible traits, I like to think that Arian holds some admiration for his father, Aegon. You know, taking the throne and whatnot. All the lords of the ladies shall, shall pay homage to my father, the great king. Your succession to the Iron Throne after King Aegon's death has triggered unrest throughout the realm. Challenges to Targaryen rule are emerging, with many small folk and other bandits outlaws causing trouble. My rule must stabilize. All hail his grace, Arian of the House Targaryen, the first of his name, King of the Andals and the Rhoyner and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. Long live the king. Now, first of all, would Arian train his son... He's diligent, although he's a craven. I mean, he, I think it's pretty... It's not... You don't need bravery to teach a 13-year-old to fight, right? So I guess we'll force train him a little. Why not? He's learning an intrigue, though, despite being really good at diplomacy. Arian wants him to go the other way. Of course he does. Now, for starters, I'm going to give you to someone a little better. My mother will teach you like she taught me, Valerian. Relations between House Targaryen and Baratheon have been strained for a while now, so much so that Lord Paramount Damon Baratheon no longer considers himself a loyalist to your house. Oh, this is regretful. Already, the, those who name themselves loyalists are quickly saying no. Oh, God, and I still have the loan, right? 
I still have the loan, but of course Arian the Unworthy is going to give himself a grand crown. I mean, he's going to. <laughs> I... <laughs> Keyholder of the Iron Bank has arrived in King's Landing. He's seeking repayment for the debts of my father, King Aegon. I owe them nothing. Yeah, no. I, d I don't owe him anything. This is totally the Aryan answer. I owe them nothing. Can I take a loan? <laughs> oh, they won't give it to me. How long is that? does that thing last? Before the banks will let me start taking loans again. Ten years, okay. Your grace, would, you, your grace, would you like a new crown forged to celebrate your dominion of the Seven Kingdoms? So which crown shall we have? A crown of gold, elaborate and large, and very ornate. A gold band set with seven gemstones of different colors. A slender gold band, simple circlet, un unornamented. No, unornamented. It's not going to be the last one, because he doesn't want simplicity. He wants something that shows his power. And I think it's going to be the elaborate crown. Very large and very ornate. I think he wants something very big that people can see. King Arian's crown. It's not exactly what I was expecting, but yeah. There you go. Your Grace, the Conclave of the Citadel has selected the Grand Maester, the head of the Order of the Maesters, and servant to the Iron Throne. So, here we have our new Grand Maester, Miles. The invitations have been sent to the Lord of the Zen Ladies of the Realm to come to the funeral. It's time to prepare the feast and the funeral itself. The guests will arrive soon. Now, I must select my new council. Damon, I'm probably going to remove his hand. Do I have anyone who likes me? Magor. The only one who mildly likes me. And he doesn't even like me. He's a two. Partially because he's at the funeral. He'll stop liking me in a couple of months. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> who shall we appoint? The Master of Durlin, maybe? Durlin is in uh, Dragonstone, so he would have served with me a while. Master of Durlin will be my hand. Master of Laws will be my mother, who is to just improve, perform statecraft, improve general relations. I'll let Stark retain his position on the Council as Master at Arms. I don't see why not. Garth can also retain his Storm as a Master of Coin. Do I want a new Master of Whispers, maybe? I think I do. Magor, my new Master of Whispers. Someone who actually likes me. And the Septon of Dragonstone will serve on my council. Who else can we have? Master Ships is here already and some advisors. So that's fine. So the council's selected. Next, we pick an ambition for our new king. Do we want to... What do we want to do? Hmm. Now, obviously, I haven't forgotten that we have a dragon egg. Okay, and we have... Where's the dragon egg? Where'd it go? Maraxes is dragon egg. There you go. And we want to hatch this. At some point. I think, so... Let's just advance time a bit. Where's the... Hmm. So no tame a dragon option? I guess have a daughter then for now. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar, and duck and... Sp yeah, I've just read this. Lavishly, obviously. We're just gonna throw gold at the wall. Your Grace, I run on behalf of the Iron Bank of Bravos to express our anger at your refusal to pay your debt. The bank is ready to forgive, however, and would be willing to cancel the debt if you transferred Maraxes' dragon egg. You want me to give you the egg that I got from my mother? A, dr a real dragon egg to pay off a 300 gold debt? No. Be mad. Be mad for 10 years. I'll, I'll just stay. Oh, God. <laughs> We're, what, a day in and someone's already trying to assassinate me? I try to sit up in bed, but someone is holding me down. It's the burly armsman with the trustworthy face I promoted to the guard last week. There is a skinny little fellow with him, grinning viciously as he produces a dagger. Screaming and thrashing about, I manage to kick the guard in the groin and break free. I punch the other one in the nose and rush from the room. Unfortunately, the two assailants got away. Now, someone just tried to kill me. So we can look at the plots and see if we do know who it is. If I do find whoever it is, they are going to be brought in chains before me, and they are going to pay very harshly. Looks like we actually don't know who it is, the person trying to kill me. Hmm. Yeah, we don't. We have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay out of hiding 
for my father's coronation, or uh, for my father's funeral and for my coronation, which I think I need gold first. Do I need gold for this? No, I don't. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to stay for my father's funeral, then quickly have my coronation and go right into hiding. Right into hiding. Uh, we need a new regent as well, not the maester. And the regent will be my mother, I think. Rainies. Lucimore I actually trust because he, if you'll remember, he actually protected Arian in Dragonstone. So it's good that he's the Lord Commander. I trust him and I name him Paramount Knight and all those things. Keep going. Hopefully we won't get assassinated a month in as king. Because <laughs> Valerian's not going to win the love of the people immediately either, but I mean... Arian's just a mess. All the guests have arrived at King's Landing. It is now time to start the feasting to celebrate the life of King Aegon Targaryen. Let the feasting commence. Book bookkeeping is an unappreciated art, and you have taken it upon yourself to master it. You have gained a clearer picture of the realm's finances, and your stewardship has improved as a result. I could do it all day. Why am I doing business? Focus on intrigue, I think. Lord Lionel Waxley has used his attendance to the feast in King's Landing to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Sir Alice of Cunnington Tower has made an attempt on the life of one of his kinsmen and demands that he's brought to justice for attempted murder. Imprison him. I have nothing to gain from him being free. I knew exactly where I would find Kala when she did not show up for practice in the library in her favorite chair with the biggest book she could find. Aren't you a real bookworm? Soon you'll eat the books as well. <laughs> uh, should I be mean to her? I think I'll just tell her to be proud in her learning, since she is my ward. Take pride, young Kala. Oh god, Boris, no, I'm not giving you gold. You can do it by yourself. Some of my guests did not seem satisfied with the food, but I would never have thought one of them would have complained out loud. Samela said a lot, a lot of nasty stuff about the food, and I couldn't help but feel irritated. My wife was mad about the food. Yeah, shut up, wife. God. Alice of Cunnington Tower is complaining about his cell. I'll let him rot. Should have probably thrown him in the oubliette. In fact, I will. Uh, where's Alice? Because you complained. <laughs> Legit. Well, actually. <laughs> okay, because he complained, I'll torture him. Fine. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, should I do one of these, maybe, or just the torture? Is this like flaying him? What's this? Your jailers have reported back to you that they made your prisoner know what true pain is. Oh, he died. He died in the torturing. He was tortured to death. <laughs> oh no, Arian. <laughs> oh, you committed much gold to this extravagant feast. In particular, the guests were impressed with the large centerpiece on the dais table. It represented a green... I just read this. It was worth a coin. Serenly has used his attendance to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Rolana Rogers made an attempt on his life. Arrest her. Please make a complaint. I will torture you as well. <laughs> the more spiced liquor my mother drank at the feast, the more louder and louder she talked and laughed until she let out a loud snoring and fell face first into her plate. The servants discreetly removed my mother from the table and took her to a bedchamber. It's disgusting, mother. Come on. Have some pride. You're a Targaryen. The funeral. I mean, I've just read this whole thing and it's the exact same so I'll just do the and so it is done bit King Aegon Targaryen died of severe stress on the first of the ninth moon of 8035 at age 62 he was a man who was known to be most courageous as well as possessing immense strength King Aegon was one of the greatest warriors of his generation his martial prowess being famed throughout the kingdom Aegon wielded the famous Valyrian steel sword Blackfire once the weapon of Aegon the Conqueror <laughs> yes truly Aegon wielded the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister, one of the ancestral blades of House Targaryen, and so it is done. It is done. My father has been crowned. Why can't I face a dragon? Why can't I do that? Or uh, hatch my dragon egg? Do I have to maybe Just stand here for a while and see if it gives me the uh, s the dragon lore bit? Or if he already has it, maybe. I don't know. That works that way. Lucian Cargill has died. My Hand of the King has recommended Sir Morgan Flowers. Morgan Middlebury. Do I have any friends I could appoint, maybe? Rhaegar's not a fighter. And that guy's a maester. <laughs> so I don't have friends. 
Uh, or rather, I don't have friends who could serve in the King's Guard. Do I have anyone I like? Maybe that would be a good fighter. I'm, I'm going to do a manual search before I accept that. And I'm just going to see if there's someone who actually likes me. It doesn't matter if they're peasant or not. But if there's someone who likes me and wants to serve in my King's Guard. Simon would probably like me if I appointed him. Because I obviously want to have my own man on the King's Guard. How about this guy, actually? Oh, no, he's really bad. <laughs> Cause, probably because of the club foot, yeah. Ideally, it'd be a man in a uh, Dragonstone. Someone I could appoint for my own, uh, like, court. But there doesn't appear to be anyone in Dragonstone who can fight. Fight. Even if I take out skilled, these would be my options. Two of them are my sons. So I'll listen to my hand's recommendation. I'll appoint Sir Morgan Flowers. However, I, your grace, I appreciate the offer. He says, however, I have ambitions that will not be served if I were to be sworn as a king's guard. How dare you? How dare you, sir? You say no to me? A bastard denying to be... Hmm, well, well. I'll make an example out of you. Arian's gonna make an example out of you. What do we do to him? And also, why can't I hatch my dragon egg? <laughs> that's the thing that's really putting me off, because... I need a dragon. I really do. If I'm going to... No. If I'm going to be able to, uh... You know, keep people subjugated under me. I'm going to need a dragon to enforce my rule. That's what Megor the Cruel did. That's what I need to do. And now there's no Valyrian for me to tame. You can struggle by yourself, Aegon. I don't care about you. Oh, Valyrian's become arbitrary. Rainies, you are not a good tutor. Like, at all. You have just and good traits, but you keep making them awful. Uh, okay, before we get off track... Oh my god. 30... <laughs> it's 20 tyranny for every landed vassal for this. Really? Fine, I won't do it. I won't do it just because it's such excessive tyranny. It's ridiculous. There's no way I can... I will start blinding people and stuff. Your prisoner has been blinded and... Uh, released? I never said released. I just said blinded. No, she wasn't released. Okay. Your Grace, I've been instructing your son Aegon in the ways of sword and lance, and he's not cooperating. All he does is gripe and moan about a few scrapes and cuts. He'd rather read a scroll than fight in a joust. Damn it, Aegon, he's too soft. He's become a wrath. Any of you, Sir Comar Page seems a decent man. Sir Eric. And Sir Garen Vaith. I'm gonna give Sir Comar Page the chance to join me, and he has. He has joined the White Cloaks. Peasants have risen up in Fang Tower. Well, huh. sent my lord commander of my king's guard to quickly deal with the peasants. The rabble will die. Do not fail me, Lusamore. Do not take kindly to failure. Your grace of Raven has arrived from Lord Dennis at Rosby. Has announced a wedding between Sir Ro Oliver Rosby and Canella Ambrose. Only the formality of your agreement is now needed for the ceremony to go ahead. I like that he's asking for my formality, actually. I do like that. They have my assent. I won't claim the right to first one. <laughs> to first night. But yeah, I'm gonna... Well, actually, can I do the... Can't do the coronation. Oh, because I'm not at peace. Well, I should be soon. Just in a second. Delegation from the Iron Brank of Bravos, led by Keyholder Illyrio, has arrived in King's Landing. He's protesting at what he considers a dishonorable debt, but is offering a deal which he says will set aside the bank. Dude, you're not getting your money back. Yeah, <laughs> you're not. This would seem fair, I accept. So the loan is extended for three years and compensation is paid to the Iron Bank. So you increase my interest rate. You make me pay you money now and you increase the loan, you extend the loan for three years, whereas it would have been five years if I agreed to pay it in the first place. Yeah. Guard sees this man. He's, he's, he's starting to anger me. He's angering me. Get him. Did we get him? 
Where is he? Where is that damn Bravosi? Aha! How do you feel about your money now, sir? I'm gonna castrate him and send him back to his bank. Or no, let's let's think of something a little more fitting to send him back to his bank. Could I cut his tongue out, maybe? Then watch him plead for money in his bank. <laughs> uh, mutilate him, I suppose. I guess we'll mutilate him and say that it's cutting his tongue out. There you go. You order the, the jailer to drag Alira from his cell while you methodically prepare your tools. No one crosses you unscathed, and Alira will become a living example of this. At least that's the plan. But who knows, you could slip. He's become one-handed and severely injured. Now, go back. And now I'm going to castrate him. <laughs> your prisoner's been castrated and released. And now I'm going to release him, yeah. And now you can go back to, to Bravos. He's had his tongue cut off, supposedly. I'm just going to say I cut it off. This didn't work. And, uh... He was sent back to his bank. Let that be a lesson to them. I'll deal with you in a second. For now, we'll organize a coronation ceremony, and we'll ask the High Septon to do it, and we'll do all that in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think we're in for a... pretty, a pretty weird time now with Arian. I mean, we're gonna be as cruel and punishing as possible. Uh, I have to figure out why the dragon egg thing isn't working, because I really need a dragon. <laughs> I might just, it might just be that it glitched and I have, and that's maybe why he hasn't hatched it so far, and I have to grant it to someone else. So, if that's the problem, I'll grant it to Valerian. I don't know, I don't know how, uh, what's happening with that. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, do like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.